Good evening, our esteemed viewers. Once again, welcome to the Tower at UNN. My name is Dr. Juko Katerega, your host and the presenter of this show. In this show, we usually discuss issues that are trending in Uganda and get sense out of them, trying to interpret them to the people, to the ordinary person in Uganda. And we try to establish how the Ugandan people can overcome all these problems that we analyze here. I am so privileged today and this evening that I have two very important persons from Uganda and these are lawyers, senior lawyers, and they are going to articulate a lot of issues, especially the land issue. Today, as you know, everybody is aware that we have a problem of the bill that has been uh, put across concerning the land issue. And they are targeting the Milo land in particular, which is so much pertinent in the Ugandan, in Buganda community. It's very, very important, therefore, that we indulge our discussion this evening into these issues of land. However, before I go any further, let me introduce my guests. And with me in the studio, I have uh, Council Owechitiwa Peter Morira. You are welcome to this show, sir. Thank you, Doctor. Um, how is Uganda, uh, Owechitiwa? Uganda is quiet, except that political, I think, the temperature is going up. <laughs> As usual. And uh, As I believe usual. it's already night uh, in Uganda. It's already 7 o'clock, 22 minutes past 7. And here yes. in uh, Massachusetts, Boston, it is just 12 minutes, I mean, 23 minutes past 12 p.m. And once again, I have... Uh, a pleasure to have you on this platform, OHTWA Peter Murida. And I hope you'll have very good deliberations regarding our country, in particular, the issue of land, as we shall indulge deeply in it. Thank you for being with us. Uh, with me in the studio, I have also Senior Counsel, Senior Counsel Judy Mbabali, uh, a renowned uh, barrister, I, I, I think in Uganda we don't call it you barristers, <laughs> a renowned lawyer and uh, very pertinent when it comes to issues of, of law and good governance. And actually, I'll give, uh, once again, I'll give him a chance to greet our viewers as we indulge deeper in the discussion. Yes, uh, viewers, who are those in Uganda, good evening. Those in US, I think it is morning, good morning. It's a pleasure having you, uh, Council Judy Mbabali, oh, I mean, here at the Tower at UNN, where we discuss uh, issues that really are pertinent in our uh, Uganda as a country, because regardless of where we are, uh, it's very, very, very important that we have Uganda, our country, at heart. Um, we are really here to discuss pertinently the issue of land, which is so much trending. And I would like, first of all, to uh, start with Council uh, Judy Mbabali. You, I would like you to uh, take us through what really land stands for in Uganda. And you know, regardless of being um, uh, a property or um, valued as a property, we want also to look at it in terms of um, the traditions of Uganda. So I would like to, within around five minutes, to have the intro introduction and try to give us what is land and how is it taken in terms of Ugandan community. Okay, thank you, Dr. Juko. Uh, land is an important uh, aspect that actually touches the life of every Ugandan. Because uh, if you have no land in Uganda, it's not easy to survive uh, and as a result many ugandans aspire to own land 
That's why you hear of us, scaffolds here and there. Land is very scarce in Uganda, and the population is growing very fast. Uh, and it seems there are few people who own land, and many who don't. So it is a very serious issue. Uh, and in an attempt to solve the problem, uh, instead our government is messing it up because uh, probably they don't uh, call out research before they pass laws. We have uh, many laws uh, governing land in Uganda. And uh, the most important one is the Land Act. And it is under that Land Act that the government intends to amend some sections to abolish uh, mainly Milo land. Milo land is uh, one of the land tenures we have in Uganda. We have others, we have customary land, we have a freehold land. Uh, now, the issue in Uganda currently, uh, government believes that Milo land is not a proper land tenure system and therefore they seek to abolish it and of course that has not gone uh, well with uh, the Uganda establishment of Uganda Kingdom you've heard the Kabaka responding in very good currency his message was very clear he didn't miss words uh, he stated that uh, President Museven and his government must keep off Milo land. So that means that uh, to Buganda and to the Kabaka, land is important. It is one of the pillars of the survival of uh, this kingdom. Honorable uh, Murira, my land colleague, I'm sure I will take us through uh, the origins of this Milo land. But currently, under my land system, uh, we have uh, Bivanja holders. Bivanja holders are tenants on uh, my land. My land uh, has uh, an important aspect that, uh, from uh, an ordinary point of view, one would think that one piece of land is owned by two people. And that's where a government says that it is not a proper uh, land tenure system. Because, I'll give an example, those of you who are not very familiar with my land, uh, Mimba Bari Jude, I may be the landlord, with the land title. But on, land title, on that land title, on the surface, there are over uh, 200 uh, Livanja holders cultivating on that land, they have buildings, they have everything that you know uh, involves uh, human activity. So these uh, tenants called Vivanja holders are supposed to pay allegiance to the, the, the owner of the land. The person in law will refer to as the holder of the free, of, of, of the Milo land. Uh, Milo land. That is uh, the person who in whose name the land title is. So this person is supposed to receive uh, something from these Vivanja holders. You've heard of uh, Busu and Mbujoro. Originally, these Vivanja holders, when they cultivate land, they would go and pay some form of tax and some form of appreciation to the land holder. Now, when President Museveni came, uh, he restored the Milo land, and under the law, he dictated that uh, the usul that is payable to a landholder is 1,000 shillings. And that went on for a long time. But uh, the owners of, uh, the holders of the Milo land were not happy with this because 1,000 shillings is a peanut. It's a very little money. Council, so as, I, no... as I chip in there, what do you mean mm. when you say the president dictated? Oh, the president uh, passed a law. Of course, through parliament, but you know under our parliament, NRM, we have NRM dictatorship. Once the president guides that uh, this is what should be done, that's what parliament passes. 
That is okay. a fact here in Uganda. Uh, so uh, most of the time, the wishes of the, the president prevail. Now, uh, these people, uh, the land holders, found it that he, this money was too little. They quarreled a bit, they agitated, but uh, the president was not uh, giving, uh, was not uh, solving the problem. But later on, I think a certain summit was passed that uh, land boards at the district can um, can pass a resolution in their meetings on how much a Chibanja holder can pay to the land owner. In Masaka where I am now, uh, a, the holder of a Chibanja pays 5,000 shillings per year to the land, uh, to the land owner. As, as, as you can sit still, yes, we call mm. it Busu actually. But it is doesn't matter how big your chibanja is, whether you have a uh, uh, chibanja of 10 acres or one acre, the amount is fixed, so the size doesn't matter. Uh, and that is unfair to, 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 to many uh, land owners who decide at the end of the day to dispose of this land because it is no longer pro productive. It is encumbered by uh, occupants, the Rwanda holders, uh, and basically this person cannot use the land, uh, the, la the, the land owner, because that land on the surface, it is all occupied. So that is the situation uh, of my land vis-a-vis the Rwanda holders. And that's what President M7 and his team uh, want to solve, because they look at it as a problem that they can solve. Uh, whether they are doing it the right way or the wrong way, I think that will come later. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Council Judy Mbabali. Council Judy Mbabali, as I've mentioned, is one of the renowned uh, lawyers in Uganda when it comes to issues of uh, uh, understanding constitutional law as well as uh, uh, land issues. And uh, let me go to Senior Council, Senior Council Owechitiwa. Uh, before you indulge in the discussion, I would like uh, uh, to you to, you know, our viewers to know exactly who you are in a brief. Owechitiwa Peter Murida, I, I would like, our viewers would like to know exactly who you are. Can, can we have your uh, brief background? Well, it's very difficult to give my background myself. I provided <laughs> a short synopsis of it to you, Dr. Joko. Maybe yes. you can read that. Okay. Okay. Um, let me try to, you know, be very brief and give uh, what, who Mr. Uh, Murida is. Um, Mr. Murida is, um, is a, a lawyer or barrister by profession, and uh, he has been a minister in Mengo government for about 15 years, and he has been practicing law in Uganda in particular uh, for at least 40 years, so he knows a lot. And one of, uh, he's a son of to the great Elidad Morira, who uh, those who have history of Uganda know how his contribution when it came to, uh, to the independence, at obtaining the independence of Uganda. Uh, he's a known writer, and uh, he was uh, actually in charge of the Kabaka's wedding. So I think you see how pertinent he is in this, the center of Buganda issues. So uh, Council, uh, I would like you to tell us exactly, uh, apart from being a factor of production, Buganda seems to be built on the issue of land. Land is too much a symbol of the traditions of of Buganda in particular, if I would say, I would like I would like you, with your knowledge and experience, to tell us what, how did land become a traditional symbol in Buganda, and how is that land also becoming? Why is it becoming a contentious issue in this uh, kind of um, this period of time? Well, land, Buganda, 
as a society is built around land, right from the time it was, it was created. You recall that uh, according to our history, five clans came and lived along the lake areas of Uganda from uh, the Central African areas during the 13th or 14th century. When these people came, they settled on land according to their clans, and they organized their, themselves according to clan uh, system. Later on, nine clans joined them from the east, led by the famous Kintu. Kintu led these tribes and joined them with the five which we have found here. But of course, at that time, the new arrivals did not have land. So it was decided that the, since the society was expanding, they should have a leader, both in cultural matters, which meant land matters, and administration, which meant political matters. And they met at a place called Nono in Busuju County. It wasn't there now, at that time. And they selected one of them to be Sabataka and Kabaka. Sabataka, the head of the cultural side of things, Kabaka, the admin, chief administrative office of the kingdom. And it was ordained that all new land acquired by the kingdom would be vested in the Kabaka. And that's why Kabaka is very central in the uh, discussion, debates about land. So Buganda expanded a great deal, especially since Kabaka Junju. And uh, by the time, I'm cutting short the history, by the time yes. the British came, Buganda was well organized both politically and socially. And the British were impressed by their land, by the land system which they found here. And they decided not to disturb it. The first land laws which were introduced in the country we are called land regulations of 1897. According to these regulations, the governor or commissioner, as he was called then, was allowed to give out certificates of occupation of land, provided that land was not occupied by Africans. And you have to remember at that time the protected had not been formed. So really this meant Uganda. And when you talked about when it, the law talked about <coughs> land not occupied or cultivated by Africans, it meant Buganda, not Uganda. So in nineteen hundred, after a lot of reasons cropped up, it was decided that we should have an agreement which would be the constitution of the kingdom. And the British government sent out a man by the name of Harry Johnson as special commissioner to come and negotiate that agreement. When he came here, he found that the land system in Uganda was almost similar to theirs back home, the common law system. And uh, he decided that uh, people should be given titles to their land. His proposal at first was that the Kabaka should be given 50 acres and the regents should be given five acres each. But the regents informed him that, look, in Buganda, we have an, a lot of people own land. 
either as cultural or clan land or individually from the Kabaka and that kind of thing. So Johnson asked the regents to prepare a list of 1,000 people and that was done. When this was done, uh, people were issued what was known then as the provision kits, which eventually were converted into final certificates. So we, were, we had the Western type of uh, land system introduced, superimposed on the old system which the British found out, found here. Now, it is also often said that the colonial governor gave out land to chiefs and collaborators. That's not true. It is the Ruchiko who, which confirmed people in their lands. And uh, Section 15 of the Buganda Agreement of 1900 is very really important because it says to 1,000 people, the land they are already in possession of. So when somebody says that uh, the governor gave out land to the people when the agreement is so clear, one wonders what the intention is. So the new system as uh, could be, would be expected caused a lot of uh, social upheavals. Those people who did not get land complained. And when the survey was done, it interfered with other people's land under customary law, the Bibanja holders whom Jude Mbabali referred to. And this caused a lot of problems which led to Sura and Mpujo law. But before I come to that, I don't know how much time I have, but before I come to that, there was another problem. Under the system of regulation, regulations, governor the governor gave out certificates to people, even foreigners. So the Baganda were now saying that what is going to happen? We are protected under the regulations. What is going to happen now? So it was provided that the government would introduce a law which will govern that situation. That law was introduced in 1908 and provided that foreigners could not hold land without the permission of the consent of the Chico and the governor. It also introduced the term Milo land for the first time. People say that Milo land started in uh, 1900. It is not true. The law defined Milo land as the system under which a person acquired land under the 1900 agreement. And as you will recall, I said that section 15 provided that uh, land will be, people will be confirmed in possessions in land of, of which they were already in possession. So my land is customary, Buganda's customary land, I mean, system. So I think I better stop here for the time being. Yes, uh, before I leave you, in a, a layman's language, I would like you to, you know, because people are asking the issue of Milo, Milo, Milo in a, a vernacular, I think means uh, mile, as a mile. How does it connote to what we are talking about here? Why is it referred to as Myroland uh, in I'm a layman's language? Can you repeat it? I'm you saying, yes, mm. OHT, I'm saying in a layman's language, what is Myroland? Because, because people, our viewers, want to understand exactly why, what is Myroland in a layman's language and what uh, does very it simply. mean? 
Mm -hmm. We think remaining land is freehold land, which was reserved for only Africans and could only be by Europeans or non-Africans with the consent of the Luchico and the governor. It's not okay. the land tenure side. So should we say, uh, I don't know whether you, you're still with us, uh, OHT, it seems like, uh, yes. Uh, should we say that Milo land is any other land that uh, that av was available in Uganda to the, Uganda, to the Baganda, but in particular, I will use the word Baganda, in particular, other than oh, the land which was owned by the Kabak. Do you hear me now? If I go to your question, you are referring to land which was given to the Kabaka? There was no, no land given than, to the Kabaka. Hmm. Pardon? I'm saying it is land that is owned by other people other than the Kabaka. No, 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 no. The hmm. definition I gave you is the, the correct one. Milo land Thanks. is freehold, which was reserved out for Africans, non-Africans could only own it with the consent of the governor. That's all. Okay. Thank you very much, OHT. Well, let me bring in Council Judy Mbabali. Uh, Council, is another explanation, again, from you, uh, that people are not very conversant, especially those that are lay people. Council Judy Mbabari, are we having you? Yes, I'm available. I am available. Yes, Can you yes sir. Yes? I'm asking whether you have a, another, I mean, a, 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 I want a lay person who is watching this this uh, TV to tell, to understand exactly, because uh, to a lay person who is not a lawyer, neither indulging too much in the politics of Uganda, some of us here, uh, you buy your land and you don't know exactly which kind of land you own, whether it's uh, it's Milo or customary or any. So I would like you to make a distinction among those kind of land that we have in particular in Buganda. Okay. Uganda, as well as Uganda, we have yes. mm -hmm. four types of land tenure. Mm -hmm. The first one is uh, the Milo land, land, Milo land Tenwa, which uh, uh, my senior council leader has uh, able defined and explained the origin. The second one is the freehold. Freehold is as good as my land. The difference actually is zero. Mm. Uh, then we have uh, the customary land tenwa. This is land that is owned according to the customs of a given region, a given tribe where land is found and it is mainly owned communally the community owns it not individuals within that community but it is owned by the community and this kind of land is mainly found in northern uganda in particular actually mm. and land that is customary uh, okay yes customary then we also have a uh, leasehold land is the tenure mm. system uh, this one is where you uh, uh, get land from either a freehold owner or a Milo land owner and you rent it for a given period of time. It is normally five years, 45 years or 90 years. So uh, the difference uh, between uh, these types of land tenure is that uh, basically leasehold you can own it if you are not a Ugandan, if you're a foreigner. Mm. But uh, freehold land title and Milo land land title, those ones who's a foreigner cannot own land, a non citizen. So that okay. is very important. Uh, yeah. Now, what uh, again, as we try to indulge deep there, uh, what can be the what are the identification of in Uganda of who a citizen is? Oh, 
because we want to digest it to the to the bone marrow. Uh, I would like to know if you say those are owned by the citizens of Uganda or the natives. Could say natives or citizen? Which of the two? Citizen. And, the, the constitution yes, talks of the citizen. The citizen. Yes. And then the citizen. who is the a citizen? citizen. Is the... A citizen, we have uh, very many types of citizenship, mm -hmm. but one must have been, uh, one must have become a Ugandan citizen by law. You know, mm -hmm. the law defines who a citizen is. We have different types, different types of citizenship. Uh, people become citizens by birth. Mm -hmm. Others come and uh, apply to become citizens. So wherever, whichever type of citizenship you are, you can own mile of freehold land. Um, foreigners are those who are non-citizens of Uganda. They are not citizens. And uh, the constitution has simplified it because uh, originally we used to have a problem. Uh, some Ugandans wanted, went and acquired uh, foreign citizenship. Mm. However, the law was amended the constitution was amended, and now we have what we call dual citizenship. So if you were a dual citizen, you were Ugandan as well as a US citizen, you can still own land. You are not considered mm. as a foreigner. Yes, again, on the very same note, I would like you to explain to the, our viewers that like, for example, uh, uh, the the clan might own land. Which kind of which type of land is that? Is it customary that is, or it uh, is customary? Yes, customary. Custom. That is customary. Yes, that's why uh, it is okay. called customary land. Mm. It is now, owned how, according uh, to the customs of uh, that uh, area. Okay. Say as then, well. how about a situation whereby there is a there is a certain type of land that usually refer to as the Kabaka's land, and people are having. I mean, they usually settle on that land and they are told to is it to pay recently i think uh, the, the last time i i i knew about it they were getting certificates as well is it lease certificate or what yeah actually uh, kabaka kabaka's type of land is uh, milo land okay so milo kabaka owns milo land then on this milo land there are bivanja holders okay some uh, uh, bona fide Uganda holders, others mm. are not. So now what Buganda did in their wisdom, they thought that uh, it is important for these people to have uh, security of tenure as uh, lease holders. So, so the Kabaka allows these people to apply for lease and they mm. get land titles. When you are Uganda holder, you don't get a land title. Though the lot of mm. some certificates but the uh, government has never implemented that, uh, that section of the law to give Uganda order certificates because it is a complicated thing. But what mm. the Kabaka has done is to allow these people to have some form of land title. A lease of 49 years is as good as a mile land title. You can take it to the bank and get uh, 400 million shillings. So you can use it as security. And that is uh, what Uganda Kingdom has done to ensure that these people have a security of tenure, have land titles, and they feel that they have value of the land and they can mortgage it, can use it to acquire loans. Okay. Okay. Um, let me bring in uh, Tiwa. Tiwa, as uh, we try to dig deeper again in this issue of land, it seems like... Uh, there is, uh, a, a, I would say, a contestation of ego between the Buganda government and the central government, I would say. Uh, because here we see that there is a, there have grown a lot of uh, tension between the two. And this prompted the king of Buganda to come out in, on his uh, coronation anniversary to be very categorical, to... Uh, uh, bring out issues that were really on his heart and actually he put them very clear that the issue of Buganda seems to be having that kind of egoism that is uh, being put the other side of the of the ISO. Uh, I would like you to look into the history of Uganda vis-a-vis -vis Buganda vis-a-vis -vis the central government when it came to land issues.
Well, Steve, do you hear us? Do you get, do you hear me? Which do you hear me? Are you hearing from me? Yes, you seem to be now hearing us, right? It seems that we have a technical problem with the OHT or Council Murida. Um, Council Jude, as we try to, uh, to you know, fix the technicalities down there with Council Murida. Uh, it seems like there is, as I've mentioned to the the, the OHT, that there has been a growing egoism between the central government and Buganda establishment. In that, uh, in many occasions, the president seems to be very, very, you know, uh, he goes direct to the Buganda establishment. And sometimes he would say we would crush you. Other times he would say we shall not allow colloquialism, and other times. He is uh, now getting his gloves off totally to the issue of land. And, you know, when he touches land, he's touching the most sensitive part of it. And here comes a situation that the Kabaka comes very, very uh, pertinent and very strong with a stronger voice saying that there is, he was actually his, if you look at his speech, it was showing that growth of the growing egoism that has really uh, that is in between the two sides. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, mm. You have actually put it right. There is the aggression against Uganda Kingdom mm. from the side of the president. Uh, I don't know why this is happening, but uh, I thank the Kabaka. The Kabaka uh, previously probably used not to hit the nail on the head. Mm. But of recent he has started hitting the nail on the head. When there is an issue, he doesn't miss words. He just states what he wants the president to do. I'll give an example. I've been chairman of Masaka district, and we are agitating that uh, sincerely, if government is promoting municipalities, why not Masaka municipality, which is the oldest municipality in Uganda? Mm. Because it had been left out. So somehow, Kabaka listened to our agitation, and when he visited, he complained bitterly to President Museven that this is a segregation. Why have you left out Masaka, which is the oldest municipality? If you are elevating municipalities to success status, Masaka mm. has all of the qualifications. Why are you leaving it out? And within two days, uh, we saw two ministers sent by President Museveni to sit with us so that Masaka is included among the 10 cities, eight cities to be elevated. Now, in the same way, the president attacked several times. Uh, uh, first, it was him direct attacking uh, Maryland. Then later on, the, the, the new minister, the uh, minister of state for lands, uh, Landy colleague uh, Dr. Mayanja was attacking actually at one time he attacked the Kabaka directly. So mm -hmm. now the Kabaka used the opportunity of his coronation to send a very clear message to President Museven and his government that Buganda Kingdom is not going to tolerate an amendment in the law to abolish Milo land system. And uh, I think three days later, I saw the Kabaka mm. and the President Museven sitting in the State House discussing uh, Maryland issues. And as we talk now, the temperatures have a bit cooled because of that meeting. So I think the Kabaka has learned that with the President Museven, you don't have to miss words, you just have to say it out. And he won actually. The way the Kabaka uh, state made his statement, it was clear that he was sending a warning that this time Buganda is not going to accept anything related to abolition of uh, my land system in Uganda. On, on that very note, Council, it seems like uh, 
there is a, a very big problem, especially when it comes to the people that are brought in to, to, in such contestations, whereby, uh, as I, I would like to bring in the issue of uh, Honorable Minister Mayanja, who is um, the State Minister for Land, and you sound, it sounds too vocal when it comes to this, and yet there is a, there is a, a full cabinet minister who I think would be very, very, I mean, the one sounding. And actually, this is very strategic to the president that he's using the very Muganda, your own one, to, you know, be the one uh, pushing this agenda. And uh, the way he addresses the Kabaka is really very, very, very uh, uh, awesome. Mm. I mean, I would say uh, very awkward. And... Uh, and actually, to a Muganda, it's very abusive uh, where he addresses him as Mutevi and all that. Uh, would you also disc indulge in that kind of uh, feeling that why uh, son of the land, the one brought in again to you know to antagonize the, the, his own system? Yeah, thank you very much, especially uh, your point on uh, the way the, the, the president addresses uh, our Kabaka, he actually refers to him as Mutebi, mm. uh, which which I think is very demeaning. Even recently, even recently, the minister himself was referring to him as Mutebi. Uh, yeah, that's very dangerous. There is also mm. today the new vision. I have seen an article written by uh, the spokesman of NRA, uh, mm. Mr. O O Fono uh, mm. uh, Throughout this article, it's a full page article. He refers to the Kabaka as Mutebi. He actually won his Mutebi. He says, Mutebi, we warn you, we don't own Buganda, and you shouldn't ransom the Buganda. So I think all of this is intended to, first of all, demean Kabaka and his kingdom, and to, to, uh, to, to intimidate. Of course, you know, Seven uses uh, intimidation language. Uh, but in this case, it is shocking that uh, a minister the state minister is more vocal than his boss, uh, the full minister for lands. Uh, but that is intentional. The mm -hmm. intention is President Museven wants the people to believe that what he's doing is legal, right? Because uh, mm -hmm. it is being propagated by a known lawyer and a Muganda, and not a junior lawyer, but a senior lawyer. I am happy many Ugandans have warned uh, Mayanja, Council Mayanja, Dr. Mayanja, of the consequences. They have even given him examples of people who have betrayed Buganda and in the end lose it all after President Museven has used them and dumped them. Thank you very much, Council uh, Judy Babali. I wonder whether we still have Council uh, Wechtiwa. Uh, I, I wonder whether we still have him uh, because he had some uh, technical issues. But let's have a break as we try to fix ourselves in, and have a break uh, so, that, so that we can be able to come back. And when we come back, we are going to, again, deep, dig deep into the issue of land and why does it come at this particular time? And if it comes at this particular time, why is it targeting? Because the Milo land issue is too much a Buganda issue. So why is it targeting the Buganda at a time when Buganda seems to have swayed their votes from the current president of Uganda and actually uh, uh, pled their allegiance to another political party? Is it a consequence of the swaying of the votes? Or oh, what is the core of this issue? As we get into uh, uh, our next episode, I mean, next section of this show, uh, don't forget to keep uh, your eyes on to this, uh, the Tower at UNN, on all our platform medias and try to, you know, continue or follow up with what are uh, the discussions and also participate in the last 30 minutes of the show, you'll be given a chance to discuss and participate with your views and in terms of calling and in terms of uh, possibly sending your voice uh, onto the studio numbers that will be prevailing on the screen of our, our television. 
but don't forget that we have the Fed Uganda Federal Consultative Council, which is an umbrella for all Ugandans that want uh, a revolutionary uh, kind of change into Uganda to come up and write to us at UFCC at getunn.com and express your interest into participating the, into this very, very important uh, uh, conference that we are going to uh, let you know when it will be starting so that you have your views listened to and known and we make a better Uganda. Thank you. Let's have a break. And when we come back, please uh, be ready to have deeper indulging onto the discussion. Thank you. Uganda <laughs> Abatesa Mujukire <laughs> Time takes a toll on everyone, they say Time is merciless, it won't wait for us to change Time, I am stressing out, I can't figure out what to say Oh, time just give us time Time Looking back on pictures And I find it hard to see You And myself in places Where we you Welcome back once again to this episode of The Tower at UNN. The day is Sunday, the 8th of uh, August, 2021, and the time here in Boston is one, 10 past 1. Uh, we here once again trying to digest issues to do with land in Uganda, and there seems to be a big problem that everyone can see. And this has brought uh, actually an, a kind of antagonism between the central government and Buganda Kingdom. And this is what we are trying to analyze so that we can get sense of it. And then 
uh, we can be able to, you know, find out what the Ugandan or the Baganda, Uganda people can do in order to overcome this issue. Uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier, I have with me uh, Council Judy Mbabali, who is a senior counsel, and he has been in the political arena as well as uh, the, the law practicing uh, dimension in Uganda. We also have for which our council Peter Molira, uh, who is uh, a renowned uh, lawyer in Uganda and also uh, a historian and a writer when it comes to issues of Uganda. He has been there all the time and he has seen th things really uh, happening. He's himself the history of Uganda, as one would say. Yes, Council Judy Mbabali, we are trying to look at the issue of Uganda vis-a-vis -vis the central government, and it seems like there is a, a continuity. And you mentioned something which was very important, that mm, there was uh, 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 the president called upon the king of Uganda, and they had a discussion, and uh, some people with uh, longer lenses were able to, uh, to say that possibly it was a call for intimidation, or was it a call for intimidation given the posture of the photo, or was it a, 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 a call for negotiations? Uh, no, I think uh, President Museveni is a cunning man. When uh, the Kabaka fired up Baganda against the proposed amendment to abolish uh, Milo Land, Mm. Somehow the president felt that that fire, that fire may be dangerous, and he didn't want it to continue that way. So mm. he somehow wanted to extinguish the fire that he, the Kabaka had started uh, mm. on his coronation day. Mm. So he initiated talks, mm. which is not a bad thing, by the way. Yeah. Uh, uh, as long as the Kabaka and his team can be strategic. Mm. Uh, and he convinced uh, President Museveni that what you are doing is not proper. Mm. You should just abandon it completely and never think of it because it is not good for you as president and your government. It's not good for Uganda uh, and Uganda as a whole. Mm. So I think uh, the president, President Museveni, played his cards very well as well as the Kabaka, because the Kabaka could do uh, as well. Uh, have refused to to join him in the state house, mm -hmm. and probably you could have said we are meeting, but no photographs should be taken. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I think throughout the meeting, photographs uh, and the videos were shot, and uh, they were all all over the social media. It became a public a public kind of uh, yeah. Uh, yes, meeting. it became a public yes. meeting. Mm -hmm. Though we didn't know what they discussed, but. Uh, Everybody could tell you that the issue was about the fire that had been mm. started by the government. Yes. Thank you very much, Council Judy Mbabali. Uh, I wonder whether you now hear us. Can you hear us? I can hear you now very well. That's very great. That's very great, uh, OHTWA. Now, let me bring you to the point I was trying to, uh, to, to uh, dissect. Uh, that uh, when you look at Buganda vis-a-vis -vis the central government, uh, time immemorial has been under contestation on various issues, especially the issue of land. I remember the famous Batakabu uh, kind of contestation uh, where the Baganda, Baganda, the Bataka were very, very pertinent on some issues that had come in concerning land. Would you go us through uh, briefly of the contestations that we have had between Buganda and the, the central government it came to land? And then we shall take it from there. Well, I'll go back to 1922. I think what happened was that a system of leasing land to the non-African came about in, in the early 20s. Hmm. And you no know, Western agriculture is not the same as ours. And this meant a displacement of a lot of people. And a man of called David D. Day, took up their cause and even went to London to get ideas and they went to court, filed a case and they lost. 
the Bataka themselves appealed to Kabaka to have the whole system recast, but they also lost. But the matter went up to the colonial secretary who made a decision in, 19, in 20, 1926. And this decision was to the effect that, one, all the disputants had to agree that the colonial secretary's sec uh, decision would be final. And secondly, he held that the system which was introduced by the 1900 agreement should remain in force. But those people on land should have a law protecting them. And that's how we got the Mbujo law, which protects the ordinary people on the land. So the matter was settled by the court of law, by the colonial secretary, by the Kabaka. And there's no reason why we, it should be resurrected today. So I see a lot of politics in it. When I read Mr. Mayanja's uh, articles. articles, and it seems he leaves, leaves a lot out of the picture, which gives a very unbalanced picture. And that's why that's the cause of the crisis between the present government and the Buganda government, because it is being advised by the wrong people. So do you think, uh, Owechitiwa, is that, uh, is it, um, uh, would we say that it's a contestation of, of ego? Or is it, uh, is it, uh, uh, because when you look at the way uh, Honorable Mayanja speaks, he speaks with a lot of arrogance, I would use that word, and he speaks with a lot of authority. And on top of that, he's a state minister, but seems to be more vocal and sounds to be, you know, having uh, inner, in kind of intrigue over the Buganda issues because I've been following him. I've tried to re re research about him and what articles has he written even before he became a minister. It seems like he has that kind of intrigue and a kind of, uh, 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 I would say, some inner part, in, inner something which within him that he's now trying to bubble out. Mahanja is a very good friend of mine until he, yes. he was, until he started writing rubbish. But I know exactly why he's writing what he's writing, and he's not the one writing it. I know that these articles come from somewhere, I won't mention mm -hmm. where, and they're taken to Mayanja for his signature, oh. for, to oh. add his name. Mayanja is not the author of these articles. That's very interesting. Uh, uh, which I Tiwa, again, uh, yes, uh, then on uh, on another note, I would like our viewers would like to know what are they, because we've talked about the land and what is that contestation that is bringing a lot of tension between the central government? What is the central government packaging in their uh, bill which they are bringing to you know, which has made every Ugandan really very, very uh, nosy about about what is happening. What is happening in Uganda is a small screen. It is hiding mm. what is happening elsewhere in the country. Mm. Only this afternoon I learned people in West Nile have been uh, cleared on a square mile piece of land to be given to an investor. In Acholi, you have the same problem. In Bunyoro, you have the same problem. But people are focusing on Buganda because it is more central. And two, this, there's no problem. There's no problem. I mean, when you examine it properly, why is it that between 1926, or 27, and 19, 2010, when we start seeing controversies here. Mm. Why is it that there was peace then, and it all, it all of a sudden resurfaced in 2010? This is a stage-managed thing. They want to create a political issue out of it, 
and then take our land, take Buganda's land without compensation. Because they are saying that the people who got allocations in 1900 got it free. So they had they lost nothing to take it away from them. But I want to tell you that in 1900, I think only 400 people got land allocations. By 1902, there are about 4,000. By 1950, it was 50,000. Now there are almost a million mile old, a million people with mile land title deeds. So why, how are you going to solve this problem? Mm. Yes, um, the which you are in, yes, mm. yes, what I'm, again, I, I would like you to tell our viewers is that the recent outburst of the, the king of Buganda when he really, uh, on his trend, uh, his uh, uh, coronation anniversary, he, he was very, very, the tone was very high and uh, actually a strong warning that came out of him when he was addressing the issue of land. He made it clear that Buganda shall not sit down as its land is being, uh, you know, antagonized with. Uh, would you think that the outburst is, I mean, the one that led to the president being concerned and then called the king to his uh, to his to the state house for a discussion? you. Yes, I'm saying that. Do you think this recent outburst is, the, I mean, resulted into the king being called by the president to, for a discussion? And is it a discussion to your thinking? Is it a discussion or it was an intimidation approach? Oh, no, no, no. no. The Kabaka and number seven are good friends. When they meet, they meet as friends, not as enemies. And I know how that meeting came about. One senior person who has, who has access to the, to the president, who happened to be at Nkoni uh, function, mm. went to the president straight from the election and mm. told him that he should reach out to the Kabaka because there is a big misunderstanding which is brewing up. And mm. that's how meeting came about. Mm. Yes, um, let me bring in Council Judy Mbabali on this point. And uh, uh, Council Judy, it seems like uh, uh, this comes at a time when everybody is wondering why has it come at this time when, you know, after the election, remember what happened in, in Buganda, Buganda swayed their allegiance to another kind of political establishment. And here the president was very bitter and said that he will punish the Buganda when it comes to, you know, issues to do with uh, uh, issues of Buganda. Do you think this is also an, a, a revelation of what happened before, or I mean, in, in the elections? Uh, of course, after the 2020 general elections, the president was bitter when he saw that in Uganda, he had been overwhelmingly defeated. Mm. I strongly believe he couldn't believe what he was seeing. Mm. It was a total defeat. So I'm sure in his heart, he's very bitter with the region. And of course, uh, he now puts the blame on, uh, on Uganda kingdom. Mm. Uh, inside NRM camp, because I've had many ministers, many MPs who lost, uh, claiming that they lost because the Uganda Kingdom mobilized against NRM, mm. uh, which I think is not true. The Uganda Kingdom told the voters through the particular that please make sure you vote for only for those people who have Uganda at heart. That was the Katikiro's message. Mm. And uh, the voters interpreted it that way. They voted in office, the people, they think, 
have Buganda chart and can uh, help Buganda achieve uh, its aspirations. So uh, I am not sure whether the president is now trying to revenge against Buganda by uh, abolishing Milo land, which is so dear, which is the pillar of the existence of Buganda's, uh, I mean of uh, Buganda kingdom. I'm not very mm. sure. I can't be certain. That's how I see it. Yes, and uh, what is very, very interesting is that uh, the Buganda members of parliament that would uh, right now be uh, very central in this issue, according to what I hear and what I know, uh, there is uh, that we don't have any any voice of uh, their voice coming out, and I think this really worries me. Uh, I would think at this time, being that Buganda MPs uh, really we have a majority of, of, I mean, possibly the Buganda or the opposition has a majority of uh, of the Buganda caucus members. And they would be really very, very sounding when it comes to issues of Buganda. And I don't hear any of their voices. Would you also try to get sense out of that? Uh, no, I think that is not very true. Uh, I have uh, heard, actually I saw even on TV, Honorable Mathias Simpoga, the leader of opposition, Mm. who is also a former cabinet minister in the Uganda Kingdom, okay. uh, talking strongly against the move by government and reassuring Ugandans that they are going to resist it. Uh, two, uh, these, uh, many of these MPs are new. They are still learning how to handle the issues. So we should not, it is too early to blame them for not speaking out. They are being careful. They are learning how things are done. You know, many, uh, many MPs were defeated. These are basically new MPs, uh -huh. and most of them young and youthful. So they still want to learn how things are done, how to respond. And many of them have actually, uh, the ones I've talked to, they are saying, but we haven't seen uh, this on our agenda in the parliament. When is it coming? Is it coming as a change in the policy? Is it a new law? Is it an amendment in the existing law? So they are still uh, they are still waiting to see what, what move exactly government is taking so that they can now act against that move. Yes, um, another point of concern is that uh, when you look at uh, most of uh, these issues that come up, they come up at a time when, you know, Buganda seems to have lost grip. A according to analysts, uh, that we always come across, especially here at the Tower. They were saying that Buganda was not a factor in the 2021 election because here, usually, uh, you remember what happened. What us usually happened is that on many occasions, uh, the former elections were too much bringing the issue of Buganda. People would do, you know, vote to fight for Buganda issues, the Biafe and all that. This time, it was not that direction, to that direction. It was too much on Honorable uh, Chagulany, on, uh, and uh, it seems that made Buganda as an establishment to lose grip on the political uh, direction of Uganda. Is that question directly to me so that I answer it straight Yes, on? yes. Mm. Okay, thank you. Now, I think that is not exactly true. Mm. Uh, first of all, Honorable Chagulan is a Muganda. Mm. Two, he was very clear during his campaigns that he was going to ensure that Buganda's aspirations are catered before when he becomes president. The same mm. message was echoed down by other contestants on no mm. ticket. Their message was mm. very clear. So I think by Chagulani winning in Uganda, Uganda gained. For example, we've been having an NRM caucus, I mean the Uganda caucus, that is a caucus uh, comprising of uh, MPs from Uganda region. Mm, mm. But it has always been NRM. But this time, uh, the leader is now uh, NUP and the deputy, Dr. Bayega Lume, is a member of the Democratic Party. So that is an achievement for uh, the NRM. I mean for, for Buganda yeah, Kingdom. Yeah. 
because mm. originally uh, Buganda Kingdom could not directly advise the caucus that uh, the Buganda caucus that was mainly comprising of NRM. Well, if a Buganda Kingdom would guide, these people would tell directly the particular that we have to go in our NRM uh, party meeting and agree on the position to take. But this time, Mwanga Chivumbi is a darling of Uganda Kingdom. Mm. He has actually been mentored by Uganda. He loves mm. Uganda so much. So I think uh, the Kingdom gained and still has a strong grip on the MPs, the current MPs from Uganda. Okay, thank you very much. Um, let's have a short, a short break. And when we come back, we are going to, uh, to discuss briefly about the issue of uh, the new uh, uh, boy on, bro on the block, that is the Uganda, Uganda Federal Consultative Council, uh, in which uh, uh, Ugandans have tried to make an establishment uh, where they will bring in all their effort to make sure that Uganda becomes a real Uganda or that will be attracted by every person outside and in, within Uganda. This is a um, uh, Uganda Federal Consultative Council, which has been uh, put across and it will be an umbrella for all Ugandans who will come up and discuss issues. I mean, it, the way Uganda and Uganda, they want Uganda to be governed. And actually, so far, the uh, the establishment has been teaching much about the federal system of governance as the best way to lead Uganda. Within our like next 15 minutes, we are going to indulge in that short, I mean, in, 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 uh, briefly, and then we'll be able to have our callers. As we go for the break, don't go away. Just come back within two minutes and we go on with our discussion. Let's have a break. Dr. Andrew Takome Kaira was born on 30th January 1945 in a small town known as Nkokonjeru in the Uganda region. He is regarded as one of Uganda's forgotten heroes, a true nationalist whose love for his country sent him to an early grave. He was a lawyer and professor and had many accomplishments since 1971, with many of his accolades attained from his education and political experiences both nationally and internationally. Significant is his doctoral dissertation titled Condoism in Uganda, which has awarded him an internationally recognized terminology now used in criminology. He joined several political organizations, including the Uganda Freedom Movement, UFM, which he was the leader, the Uganda National Liberation Front, UNLF, later joining the National Resistance Army, NRA, which had once been his organization's rival. Dr. Kaira is regarded as one of Uganda's forgotten heroes, a true nationalist whose love for his country led to his premature death. He was just 46 years old when he was assassinated on 6 March 1987 during a dinner with his close friends and three female acquaintances. His killers have never been brought to justice.
Welcome back once again to the last section of our show to, tonight as we try to digest some of the issues that have trended in Uganda and that are very pertinent when it comes to governance in Uganda. Uh, we are back from the break and we are trying to discuss now one of the most important issues that we have identified within this week. One of these issues is that uh, Uganda, according to history, has not changed the power peacefully. And as a result, many people are wondering when that opportunity will come and they change power uh, successfully from one <coughs> person to another. And in this regard, therefore, people are devising all possible means the recent attempt was the one of the election of 2021, and people really got so disappointed with the results because everybody, it is categorical, very clear that the election was won by Honorable Chagurani. Unfortunately, he never took power. Now, there is a new establishment, the Uganda Federal Consultative Council, which is taking shape with an intention of involving all Ugandans in guiding where Uganda should be in the next hundred years and more. This has uh, prompted a call for all Ugandans all over the world to come up with their uh, technocratic kind of uh, uh, ability, whatever ability they have in terms of um, uh, policies and knowledge and skills to come up in uh, an establishment to find a way that is very best for the country, Uganda. Let me start with um, Council Judy Mbabali. There is that new establishment which has been initiated by possibly many uh, professionals in, uh, in the diaspora that they want to guide away where Uganda needs to be. And one of the most pertinent issues they are trying to bring forward is the issue of federal system of governance. They believe that the federal system of governance is the one that can bring to bury all those problems that we have in Uganda, because each part of the country will be uh, ruled by their own sons and daughters, and that will not bring any antagonism within the system. What is your say about this uh, establishment, the Uganda Federal Consultative Council, and what do you hope it to achieve in case you have learned of it or in case you are learning about it? Well, uh, thank you, Dr. Juko. Uh, that sounds uh, a, a great idea. Uh, I believe, I strongly believe Uganda deserves a federal system of governance. And if there is a, a group calling itself Uganda Federal Consultative Council and they want to spearhead the adoption of uh, the federal system in Uganda as a system of governance, I welcome the idea and actually I would wish to join them. I have been to Germany. I have seen what the federal system of governance has done to their country. Uh, however, my question would be, and I would need clarification or some piece of advice. Uh, the, these people should tell us from the word go which kind of federal system they are agitating for. Because we have many. I'll give you an example. It is one that is the best on uh, smaller local government units, mm. like it is in Kenya, like it is in Nigeria and Germany. There is also one that is based on uh, uh, kingdoms. Uh, and uh, I think many people in Uganda, once you talk over the federal system of governance, they will tell you, for us, we want Uganda to become a territory, to become uh, a, a federal state. And then the Banyanko will tell you the same. So which kind of federal arrangement are they talking about? They should be very clear. Uh, Betty Kamia, who is now in government, as uh, IGIGI, where she was appointed the IGIGI, 
originally she was a minister in charge of lands. Uh, before she became uh, uh, a minister, before she was appointed, she was uh, agitating seriously for a federal system of governance. But one time when she was asked which type, she mentioned that uh, the federal system based on Buganda as uh, one of the federal states may not be sustainable. And uh, immediately people lost interest in her kind of uh, federal arrangement. And that's where she lost steam. And uh, I think later on she felt frustrated and joined the NRM. So they should state clearly from the word go which type of uh, federal arrangement they would prefer. Yes, uh, uh, Council, the idea has been conceived uh, that they need, there's a need to establish uh, a platform. Uh, this is a platform. This is uh, uh, an umbrella. They, it's not a, it's not, they are not politicians, and they have not come up with something. With them, they say that this is a platform where we shall have a conference and consult all stakeholders of Uganda to, to bring out which kind of governance they want. And if they agree on the kind of governance, then they will choose uh, experts, a panel of experts in that regard, to go and benchmark all those countries that they think might be very, very important in terms of uh, governance, and they are doing it better or best in terms of federal system of governance. And that panel or that group of uh, experts will come up with a report, which report will be uh, used as a policy document when it comes to the governance system. And that very conference is going to raise many panels, many uh, uh, commissions, which will be writing on policies that concern different, uh, different um, uh, issues of, of governance, like uh, sectors of, of the government in terms of education, health care, military, and all that. So that is uh, what people are conceiving. And uh, they don't have a dictation on what, but they have a platform where people will come up and discuss and they come up, they bring up their ideas and finally those ideas will be put into a paper. Okay, thank you very much. That sounds a good idea. Thank you for the mm. clarification. Mm -hmm. We shall give support when they start. Thank you very much. Um, as we try to get in touch of uh, OHT, who I think has had technical problems. Um, again, briefly, uh, Council, uh, there is a trending issue right now about uh, uh, the, the point of uh, extradite, ex, extraditing a, a person who has been working, I mean, being in a foreign country. I would like you to briefly give us uh, the, legality, the legality in uh, issues to do with uh, uh, possibly, I would call it, um, deportation of an individual who has been in a country uh, of... Uh, possibly having, seeking for a refugee and all that. Does that country need to be having a, a, a possibly, how do you call it? You, you know the language of law that you can use to explain that. Thank you very much. Would you please briefly dissect into that kind of uh, talk, which is around within the social media and all over Uganda? Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, last night, no, the other night, I saw on TV, I think it was NTV, the minister in charge of uh, foreign affairs, the state minister in charge of, in charge of foreign affairs, uh, Honorable Okelo Oriem. He was telling the country that any time uh, Rumbuye, is it Fred Rumbuye? Whatever mm. the name, Fred Rumbuye, mm. would arrive in Uganda at exactly 3.45 a.m. in the morning. Mm. Uh, everybody waited for Lumbuye. He was nowhere to be seen. Now, me as a lawyer, when I saw him stating that mm. and confirming it to Ugandans that the man would be in the country in the next few hours, 
I, uh, my, uh, my mind told me as a lawyer that that would be an illegality committed by the government of, uh, of uh, where Umbuya is. I think that is, uh, what is the country I've forgotten? Turkey. They said it is in Turkey. Mm. Yeah, Turkey. The government in Turkey and the government of Uganda. Mm. Because if you have a fugitive in your country, you mm. don't just hand him over like that. It, is, does, it doesn't work like that. Mm. There are serious laws, international laws, that govern the procedure of extraditing a fugitive, a person who is seeking asylum, a person mm. who finds himself in another country on a political mm. reason. Mm. You've used the word deportation. There is a difference mm. between deportation and extradition, according mm. to the law. Mm. Deportation involves uh, if somebody is found in another country and uh, he has been a found to be in a breach of uh, the laws, immigration laws in particular, mm. that person can be deported. Mm. But uh, extradition means that uh, the person that is seeking that person to come back home has identified some offenses that were committed by that person, and therefore there is a need for that person to come back to the country and face the law. Mm. In this case, the latter mm. is what is pertaining. Because mm. the government of Uganda and particular President Seven said mm. there are people who are committing uh, offenses and we need to arrest them. Mm. Lumbuya is known to be anti-government. Mm. He has been making serious statements, which is his right, by the way, mm. to uh, to criticize the government of the day. It is his right, mm. fundamental right, in born, inherent. Mm. Now, if you go and arrest him, and he gives you an excuse mm. that, you see, I am a member of a political party that is competing against the government of Uganda, and I'm an active critic. Mm. Then he becomes a political what? Asylum seeker. It, it actually means that Rumbuye cannot be extradited, extradited back to Uganda because he is wanted in Uganda for political reasons. Mm. And therefore, it would be a mistake for Turkey, a country in Europe, to allow Uganda to go and abduct because I hear he was abducted. Even that is not proper. Mm. So the proper procedure would be if there is no arrangement, written arrangement mm. between Uganda mm. uh, and, uh, and, and Turkey over such matters, how to extradite mm. people, mm. then the international law would prevail. And that means Rumbuye is a political asylum seeker his country wants him to answer charges relating to politics, and therefore he's, he cannot be extradited. And that's the reason, I'm very sure, that's the reason for the delay for his arrival in Uganda. The government of Turkey is still looking at that procedure seriously. And you are aware, Turkey is in the limelight, because in the recent past, uh, somebody called Kasogi was killed in Turkey. Yes, Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So it would, be, it would be a very big mistake. And actually, here in Uganda, we have started demanding for Okero Riem to resign his position as a minister because he lied to the country that the man was arriving and he hasn't arrived. We are asking him, Honorable Minister, where is the man? You are now standing, we are very sure you have embarrassed the country. You have embarrassed yourself. Kindly resign. But he's nowhere to be seen. He has hidden now. People are looking for him to answer the question, but he's nowhere to be seen. And actually, so when you look at question. international law, you find out that it's very reckless. The statements that the minister was making were very reckless because the, yes. the government of Turkey might even uh, sue them over that, those statements, which we are yes, making, putting, is putting yes. Turkey in a position of, uh, yeah, of breach of international uh, agreements that concern yes. human rights and yes. 
Then uh, uh, let's have uh, our, our our producer. Let's have the uh, the phone numbers on the screen such that uh, members can start, you know, participating in the show because it seems like we are getting closer to the end of the show. Um, let's have our callers in uh, our our voice messages also sent so that the councils can be able to answer your questions or to give your guidance over some of the issues which have been discussed here. And uh, I actually, we shall be uh, in position to answer them. Council, as we wait for the callers and uh, would like also to you get your advice concerning about people that have been so worried about their uh, land, those who have been, uh, who are landowners, especially the my landowners and uh, been so much worried about what is going to happen if it is abolished uh, the way they mention it hey, no I, I think you know that's why there is going to be debate over this in parliament in case it is mm. brought as an mm. amendment mm. Uh, one of the issues should be if my land is to be abolished how do you compensate mm. the my land owners uh, senior Munir has talked about it uh, people say that the intention of government is uh, to cure the historical mistakes that were made uh, uh, during uh, pre-independence times. Mm. And that is uh, sharing of the land amongst the chiefs, the Kabaka, and what have you. And that was a mistake, a political mistake, I mean a historical mistake that it is also unfair and greed so they want to chew that, they want to rectify what went wrong. But I totally disagree because that would cause chaos if it is implemented as mm -hmm. Mayanja Sam proposes in his articles. Mm -hmm. uh, the people who own land according to Uganda's constitution and international law, if you own something that is valuable, nobody can deprive you of it until you are adequately and promptly compensated. Mm. So I think they shouldn't worry. Nobody will enact a law that uh, achieves such a thing. You just grab land, take it as government, and you don't compensate the owners. It is a clear now, principle. Again, again, on the very same note, would like to know, if that land is deprived of the, uh, the, the owners, for example, per se, would we where does that land go? Does it go to the government or who who takes away that? I mean, who owns the land then? Yes, we are yet to know because they haven't been very clear on that. But I think their proposal is to have this land taken by government mm. so that people can apply for it afresh. Mm. You know, there is a free land in Uganda that you apply. It is called uh, wherever you 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 according to our Ugandan law. When you identify land that is not owned by anybody, you mm. can apply for it and get a title free, a free holiday land title. Through purchase so or I think through what? We, yeah, you, you apply, you say I've identified land, it is mm. not, uh, this land is not owned, it is not titled. Uh, you apply to the district land board. Then the district land board goes to the ground to prove <laughs> that the land is available and not occupied. Then you pay some little money and you get it. That's how people have now, using that, the weakness in that law, that's how we have acquired uh, land that belongs to forest, love, forest reserves, mm. land mm. that belongs to, 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 um, to homes of animals, mm. then the land that belongs to, to swamps, mm. because that is protected land. Then land that belongs to people who are absent, mm. like a doctor, you must be having land somewhere in Uganda. Yes. Somebody notices you've not been here for 10 years. Mm. So he goes to the land board and he claims, of course, after bribing them, that uh, this land does not belong to anybody. And he will apply and get it. Uh, I think the, that land might be, might be owned by, I mean, in terms of documentation from the land office, it's very clear that it is owned by a person. Yeah, but uh, haven't you heard of uh, Milo Land, a, 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 a freehold title sitting on Milo Land? 
It is very yes. common. Yes, yes, yes. yes. These people, once they get money, they can do anything. You know, we are working on the corrupt regime. So once you have money, you say, don't mind. For me, I will deal with that person who owns this land title. He's either dead. Sometimes they declare you dead. Sometimes they just grab it. When somebody has a title sitting on another, they use guns. You've seen people being evicted using guns. Mm. I have seen many in Masaka and in many other areas in Uganda. People are being evicted as a result of having a free world land title sitting on an existing Milo land. It's very common. Yes, uh, let's have, we have uh, callers uh, ready and then we have the questions set across <laughs> direct and be able to you know, I uh, have uh, them di uh, answered. If there is any by our producer, we'll be happy to receive them. Let's have let's have the some audios which have been sent, and then we'll be able to answer them by the council. Yes, producer, go ahead with the with the voice. Hello, our panelists. Thanks for the wonderful information you give us. Uh, I would like to call upon Council Judy Mabali and Vera to please join UFCC such that the and decide they can help in deciding a suitable federal system that suits Uganda. Since it seems Council Babali has something knows about this. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, uh, my other question is how will the government compensate the king who owns my land? Does this mean that Museveni and his government are making themselves colonial masters to tamper with the Milo land? Thank you. Okay. I'm watching. I'm watching. I'm watching. I'm watching live from Uganda. Yeah. Though I'm using the number for South Africa, I returned to Uganda, just returned to, South, to Uganda. Um, my question is, will the men be able to be transferred to uh, any country which is on his choice according to the United Nations law? Or is going to be brought back here? Because if you being brought back here, it will be his death. So on the during the time we were waiting, um, we were online and uh, we could see some information that would be taken to the land. Uh, today on the social media, the Ugandan, I mean, some bloggers of US and I. They put a uh, audio saying Lumbuye, sure Lumbuye, but I could see them as a drug innocent. He's talking about he's been sleeping, and other people are saying that he's been arrested. The brother, that they are using that today, even in the morning, Lumbuye is um, an account. It was active, you could see someone is drinking tea. But if you could see, I saw the tea bag is from here for Uganda. And you could see the environment where it was, it was in Uganda. So it seemed confusing. Mm. Dr. Drupo, I would like uh, Council Judy Mbabai to kindly explain to us what he means by free land. I didn't know that there was such a thing in Uganda 
where there was a piece of land that had no ownership, honestly. Thank you, Tyler Bray. UNN, uh, good evening. Uh, greetings to Mr. Jude Mbabali and uh, uh, Dr. Joko. Uh, my question uh, goes to uh, Mr. Jude Mbabali. I'm asking you, why politicians in Uganda, they are so scared, they fear, they hate federal system of governance? Because we grew up uh, hearing federal, 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 but the way politicians twist the word for us, we grow, we grew up knowing that federal means Kabaka, federal means Uganda, Uganda only. But these politicians, especially the opposition ones, because I've ever had the opposition politician twisting that word. Why the politicians in Uganda fear and hate? federal system, yet they move around the world, they visit uh, uh, federal countries like German, USA, Switzerland, the U United Arab Emirates, but why do they don't admire? Why, why do they hate? Thank you very much. My last question to Mr. Judy Mbabali about the, uh, the, 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 the issue of, land, of, of minor land, we are requesting that if you politicians and other opposition, before they look into that law, government will act on that law. We want the government, do you have any effort to enforce uh, the government of mafias to look into the issue of our lost land, the land we lost to Kenya, the land we lost to Sudan, they, they tackle the minor land. Why, do, why don't they first look into that that issue of the land we lost there. Okay, let's have those questions answered by Honorable, yes, Honorable Judy Babali, and then we see what other questions are. Uh, thank you, Dr. Juko. Uh, there is an appeal that I should join, uh, that mm. federal platform. Mm. I have already indicated that I'm very willing join because uh, I've always agitated for the federal system of governance. That's so great. The answer is uh, a firm yes. Mm. Now, uh, compensation of my land, of the Kabaka, if uh, my land is abolished, my land is abolished. Council, would you speak um, a little louder? Okay. Uh, mm. Somebody asked a question about compensation to the mm. Kabaka if my land is abolished because he owns a big chunks of land in mm -hmm. the form of my land. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I've stated that if this amendment is to go through about this my land, then the issue of compensation must be at the forefront. Parliament, when debating uh, this uh, amendment, must clearly state how my land owners, including the Kabaka, are going to be compensated. And that uh, explains why there is a very strong resistance against uh, this amendment to abolish my land, because mm -hmm. it will result into confusion. Many Ugandans no longer trust the current government in Uganda. They think the intention are malified. The intention mm -hmm. is to grab land free of charge. So uh, that must be very clear if the amendment is to go through. Okay. Uh, then uh, uh, somebody asked a question about uh, Mr. Rumbuye. Actually, he said for him is sure if Mr. Rumbuye is brought back to Uganda, he's going to be killed. Uh, to some extent, <laughs> he may be right, but I'm sure if he's brought back to Uganda, the law states that he must be subjected to justice. Mm -hmm. So he cannot be killed if he's subjected to a court of law. Uh, so I, did, I don't know what kind of a killing he was talking about. Is he talking about extrajudicial killing or being killed when he's convicted and the court says you have to suffer death? It wasn't clear. But mm -hmm. the overriding principle is 
that the law must be followed. Even if he's successfully extradited to Uganda, he must go through the process of court. That's what the court says. And I'm sure if he's subjected to courts of law, he will be able to be defended by his lawyers who know the law. Freehold land, uh, you know, this scholar has stated that he wasn't aware that somebody can acquire a title uh, if he identifies the free land in Uganda and he asks what exactly is this freehold land. Freehold land is land that you own in perpetuity. It is uh, the same as uh, Milo land. If, according to the Land Act, you identify land that does not belong to anybody. And up to date, land is being identified, and genuinely you find that the land wasn't surveyed, it belongs to nobody. So you can apply. There are some people who have uh, leases on uh, uh, freehold land, land that belongs to government. Those people are encouraged to apply for freehold in their names, it is acceptable. For example, if we have a, uh, a lease on a, a government land, you can apply. Some people, there are some forests that are being degazated, you are aware of that. Parliament mm -hmm. can degazate a forest. So if that land becomes available and you have been uh, uh, sitting on that land as a, uh, a Chibanja holder, you can apply to have that land in your names and you get what you get is a free hold land title you do that through the land boards that are at the district then he's asking why are politicians why do politicians fear yes <laughs> it's <laughs> it's a a good scared of federal system <laughs> <laughs> you know politi many politicians come to politics because of their selfish ends because of they want to gain as persons, uh, selfish uh, intentions. Now, under uh, a federal system of governance, especially that one we are the one, the kind of federal we are agitating for, that makes Uganda an independent state within a state, it will not be easy to swindle. For example, a minister of central government currently controls all of the land that is in Uganda, it is under him or her. But mm -hmm. under the federal system of governance, the land in Uganda would be controlled by the minister, the state minister, I mean the federal minister in charge of land. The land in Acholi would be controlled by the person who is in charge of land there in that uh, federal state. So that's why people fear. They don't want to lose the power. That is loss of power. The power will have gone to the federal states. It will have, so they fear to lose that power. I think mm. that's what even President Museven fears. Lastly, yeah. mm. he talks of land lost to Kenya and Sudan. <laughs> I wasn't born when Uganda became uh, independent, but I'm aware that uh, the colonial uh, and he drew the maps, the boundaries of Uganda, of Kenya. And uh, I have been taught in class that Buganda, I mean Uganda was bigger than it is currently, but part of its territory was given to Kenya and I think part of it to Sudan. I don't know the reason yet why that happened and I don't know whether that land is recoverable, but you remember when Amin tried to recover some territory <laughs> from Tanzania, he was attacked and removed from, from power. power. Mm. Mm. So it is a bit dangerous to be actual aggression against a neighboring country. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Judy Mbabali, for those uh, wonderful answers to the question. Uh, I come back to OHTWA because we had lost you. And in the process, we have discussed a lot. Uh, one of the issues that we have uh, been di digesting is the issue of Uganda Federal Consultative Council, which is an establishment by uh, professionals in the diaspora who came up with an idea that they should establish a kind of platform for all Ugandans to be consulted in order to uh, be part of the way they want to be governed. 
And one of the pertinent issues they are bringing forward, and uh, actually for us at UNN, our role is to, to publish or to give them platform to discuss, uh, is that they are talking about the federal system of governance that they feel like would be the most secure to the people of Uganda and to the borders of Uganda because each one will be working for his own kind of uh, location to see that it, it supersedes the other. That competitive kind of arrangement, which is a, a good kind of healthy uh, development, de development strategy. Uh, I want you to indulge a little bit in that and give us your insight. Well, in 1962, when Uganda became independent, Uganda was given a federal status. And as you know, it, it was given independence on the 8th of October and joined the rest of Uganda on uh, 9th October and became one country. People have been asking, what is the, why was Uganda given independence before Uganda? And this is because Buganda had an agreement with the British before Uganda was formed. And under section three of the Buganda agreement, Buganda agreed that should be a province in a protectorate that was going to be formed. The protectorate was formed two years later and Uganda became a provincial, acquired a provincial status within that pro protectorate. Now, the problem which came about, or which we do notice today, people are saying that Uganda was given a special status. It wasn't. All the districts in the other three pro provinces had the same right to become provinces but they chose not to. So what is happening now is that Buganda is being told to come down to a district level because the other districts don't want a provincial level. And you cannot have a federal system at the kind of uh, district, district size of the districts which we have today. Mm. So my first point is that we cannot go back to 1961-62 federal status. Since 1962, there have been a lot of developments in the system of federal states. You have a country like uh, Kenya. It has more, it has developed, developed powers on counties, mm. and these counties are very powerful. They control their own affairs. My, what am I driving at? Mm. I am saying that let us not be boxed in and think that the only solution to our political problems is a federal system. Mm. We can look at devolution, we can look at other examples like in Spain, which could guide us to uh, something which could be satisfactory. So I welcome the idea of a federal platform in the sense that it can give us a way forward. Mm. Yes, so which Tiwa. And uh, there are a lot of other questions that have come across. And uh, one of those issues is the issue of uh, the viewers were able to ask a lot of questions. One of the questions that was very, very uh, pertinent was the issue of that many politicians in Uganda don't like that sharing of power within uh, the, I mean, by states within the country. They feel like it is depriving them of the rights and participation in most of those uh, dubious, possibly dubious deals that involve uh, that involved in Uganda. And yet, the, if you go federal, you would find out that uh, many people will be deterred from doing those uh, dubious deals that uh, uh, really en enriching only few people. And this will be uh, really affecting people, other people with different interests. 
What's your take on that? Well, the, my take is that yes, politicians don't want to hear the word federal at all. But this is because of UPC. When uh, UPC was formed in 1960, Obote held the, the first rally in Jinja and declared that UPC had come to crush Buganda. And since then, anything to do with Uganda has been demonized. The Kabaka ship has been demonized, the mango has been demonized, land has, Milo land has been demonized. All this is part and parcel of this UPC strategy to see that Uganda is no more. So really we have to be very careful. Unless we sell ourselves, there's a problem now the problem of uh, selling ourselves. If we are going to stand on a pedestal and dictate to others, they're going to hate us more. This time has come for us to sell our ideas in a more progressive manner, which will convince other people to join us. That's very important. That's why at the Federal Consultative Council, we are calling upon almost every person from different walks of life and other from different uh, political divide and different, I mean, uh, tribal divide. And then they come up and have their views on how they want. And apart from even the governance itself, also the, we want to gather some information on uh, policies to do with the other sectors like health, like uh, like uh, military, like uh, a parliament, how the parliament should be and all that, that because we see everything is going this way uh, in the country, Uganda. Another question that was very, uh, very pertinent was the issue of land. We're asking what will happen in the case, uh, to, the, to the Kabaka's land, because as you mentioned, my land is basically Kabaka's land. And uh, uh, what will happen in case they abolish the My land? Where will the will the Kabaka be compensated to? Where will that land go? Will it go to the government? My land is not owned by the Kabaka. My hmm. land is owned by individuals, including the Kabaka. Yes. Sir. But there's the issue of 9,000 square miles, which was Crown land, and which the British took from Buganda and kept it as a uh, possession of the monarchy of the UK. But uh, at the, in the 1961 Buganda Agreement, this mm -hmm. land was returned to the Kabaka as a trustee for the people of Buganda. But the 1967 constitution removed this land and took it to the central government. And now it is in the districts. I had Jude refer to it as land which is not owned by anybody. It is owned by the people of Uganda. And it, uh, it has to be claimed as such. But uh, the government is, the problem we have is that people don't distinguish between a corporate institution like the Kabaka ship and the person who holds it. Uh. They think that the land belongs to Motevi and how can one person be own 9,000 square miles? Yes, they it don't make a distinction a between an individual and, uh, yes, that's true. They don't distinguish between an individual and, and an entity. institution. Yes, yes, go ahead. Perhaps if we can convince people to make that distinction, we'll see a lot of progress made in the issue of land. Uh, then, uh, are you still with us? Yes, I'm with you. I yes. sorted out my problems. Yes, thank you very much, Oishitiwa. Then another issue that people are bringing forward is the uh, they are saying that what how, if that land goes to whom does it go? Does it go to the government? Where, where does the land go if it is deprived of its owners? As if the law is passed. 
Now, the biggest problem today is to know who owns what. The Constitution provides that all power belongs to the people. And the government has only power given to them by the people as per the Constitution. Mm. The Constitution does not give this government power to take over people's land. It only allows it to, uh, to, 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 to own land which it uses for its own purposes. And uh, under the Bill of Rights, the government can acquire land for the purposes of uh, development projects. But it cannot acquire land to take it from Peter Mulira and give it to Dr. Duco. That's an international problem. Mm. And uh, the second problem is this. We are signatories to the United Nations Universal, Universal Declaration of uh, Human Rights yes. in 1948, mm. which protects people's property. Now, I hear politicians say that they are going to amend our constitution. If they amend the constitution and remove that protection, mm -hmm. the treaty, the, United, the, the, the human rights declaration, will catch them. They will not be able to take it. Thirdly, and this is a very technical point, mm -hmm. there must be a sovereign, what lawyers call sovereign title from which all interests emanate. In the case of Uganda, at the outset of the colonial period, the crown of Britain, the monarch of Britain was the, I mean, the sovereign title was vested in the Queen of uh, England. After independence, that title was vested in the government of Uganda. That's why the all freehold titles were given out by the government of Uganda. Today, the constitution says the land is vested in the people, in the citizens of Uganda. Mm. Uh, uh, there is no title. Where is the title of the, of the citizens of Uganda numbering about 40 million people? So there are technical issues which people like Mayanja overlook and concentrate on attacking a historical point, which was settled anyway in 1927. We should be resolving the issue of where the sovereign title in Uganda resides. The government so, uh, at the moment does not have power to take over people's land or to abolish land as such. Yes, so which two, as we conclude, what is your, I mean, what would you advise our viewers who have land? People like uh, Dr. Juku who has land in Uganda and he feels like uh, he's going to be deprived of his land. I mean, what is your advice? My advice is not to Dr. Juko as mm. a person. Yes. My advice is to the government of Uganda Mm. that let people manage their affairs the best way they know, and that's the way they used to manage their affairs before. The British did not disturb the Mayo system, the, the land holding system in Buganda. For example, mm. in Buganda, I was reading a letter written by Kabaka in 1926, in which he said that it was addressed to the governor. He said, from time immemorial, people had the right to live on land and they could not be thrown off it. And the Busuran and Rujolo section eight provides that uh, everybody has a right to live on land, on, people, on other people's land, provided he has the consent of the land owner and that the landowner has no right to refuse to accept that person, except in the case of a witch and a criminal. Okay. So I'm appealing to the government that, look, what they're trying to do is running into a lot of problems because it is not in the reign 
or central government. This is a matter for locals to 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 to, 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 to organize. And maybe my last advice, which is not only to Dr. Joko and our customary system, every my every landowner had to appoint a musigire mm. who looked after his land. So I would advise Mr. Joko, Dr. Joko, mm. to appoint a musigire. Thank you very much. Look Thank you very land. much, Tiwa. We have some other callers uh, or voice callers on uh, on uh, by the producer. We're gonna read, bring them over, and then we try to see how we conclude our show today. Let's have some voice from the producer. Uh, good evening, Doctor. Uh, good evening, Mr. Jude, and then uh, Council Morira. My question goes to Council Maria. Is there any possible way, if at all, we fail to agree with the rest of Uganda and Uganda <coughs> separate itself from the rest as not in <coughs> like as we hear there was agreements before? Can those agreements be looked into? I'm still in text. Uh, let's go ahead. Greetings, Dr. Juko, and our guests, plus my fellow viewers at UNM TV. This is Nasanga Smaya, also known as Nava. My question will go to Dr. Judy Babari. And my question is, Mr. Judy Babari, do you think Uganda will gain anything from the new Uganda caucus? Or it will just benefit Mr. Kating? That is my first question. Another question of you is that Mr. Kating only preached unity, which is the idea of being serving. And we all know that he didn't mention anything as far as federal is concerned, do you think Mr. Chabonga is going to preach federal after gaining power? And we, know, and we all know that federalism means sharing power or sharing resources amongst the regions. Do you think Mr. Chabonga is going to do anything as far as federal is concerned? Another thing or another view is that we can't expect anything from, from that Uganda Coca. Because based on the Kabaka's situation is in now, their only quest and the only thing they can do is to talk about Mr. Lumbi. And um, for me, according to the little knowledge I have, I think Mr. Lumbi was brought in to divert all Ugandans on the Kabaka's situation and the way he appeared in the public, or that some of the the some of the words he said from his speech on the coronation. So they are trying to use Mr. Lumbuye or Mr. John to divert all of Ugandans. Because yeah, if you go to the social media, you only find Mr. Lumbuye issue. No one is saying about anything as far as the Kalaka situation is concerned. And I think that is a diversion. Another thing is that Lumbuye saga was just created. And to me, I think they were holding him and they're just waiting for the right for the right time to use him. And this is the right time to use Mr. Lumbuye. Because the how can the Minister of Foreign Affairs come out and say Mr. Lumbuye we are expecting him on the plane boarding today and up to now, no nowhere to be seen. And people are just there asking themselves, is it Lumbuye killed? Is Zimbabwe in another country? Is it Lumbuye? Is, um, is this true that Jumbi is in the, in the custody of Uganda police? Nobody knows anything. They're just there playing on people's minds as they are passing time. You see? And for them, the, the, their land issue is going smooth because no, any, no, there's no any Ugandan who's paying attention on that. The only thing they can do now 
is to cover Lumbu. The old media is being covered up with Lumbu issues. There's nothing, there's nothing to benefit Ugandans. There's, they are just blogging Lumbu, Lumbu, everywhere you see Lumbu. And even now we are talking about Lumbu. How, how long does it going to take for us to wake up and to see that Mr. Seven is just diverting us as he's been diverting us in many occasions? Thank you, Mr. Juko, and all the guests we have in the studios. And mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Good evening, Doctor. Uh, good evening, Mr. Jude, and then uh, Council Morira. My question goes to Council Morira. Is there any possible way, if at all, we fail to agree with the rest of Uganda? And Uganda separate itself from the rest as not more. Like as we hear, there was agreements before. Can those agreements be looked into? I'm Stephen, thanks. Mm. Yes, uh, can we first answer those questions? And uh, I think, uh, Council Murira, you had two questions, and those questions were the same. Um, yes, uh, I think, and the current okay. situation stimulate what happened during what is happening, where the king Edward Mutesa had tried to abort to take a parliament from Uganda. Thanks. Yes, our producer, I think let's for now answer these questions and then we'll be able to go to to uh which Tiwa the person has actually this is the second question, the one that has come last he was talking about how would you relate the current situation and the situation that happened which in which the, the, the king of Buganda uh, actually uh, told the central government that if they cannot heed to what they are saying, they would uh, get their administrative uh, post from Buganda to another place. Then uh, he, both other two people were asking about that if the other regions of Uganda have failed to comply to what Buganda wants and this is keeping them behind. Would you not think that Buganda should secede? Let me ask, answer the last question first. Mm. We should never, never think about secession because we will not get any support from anybody because we are one country. And the Kabaka the other day told President Seven, I think it was, that Buganda has no intention to secede from Uganda. And such talks or questions tend to threaten our, to scare our friends and the Ghana's against us. I think the right policy should be to offer carrots to the other Ugandans so that we build a country where everybody is happy. Uh, about the second question, no, you cannot negotiate an agreement to get out of Uganda. I mean, to, to, to secede from Uganda. And the question about uh, 1966, all you read and hear is, is fabrication. The Ruchiko did not I repeat, the Ritiko did not pass the resolution. It was introduced by the driver of one county, county one, one of the counties. The cabinet rejected it. They advised the powers that be that the government would not support it. And Obote himself, on May 25th, told parliament that no resolution was passed because hooligans were controlling the proceedings. The speaker could not speak. The Katikyo could not speak. In fact, the Katikyo was escorted out of the chamber by police. 
But later on, I think Obote discovered that there was political advantage in claiming that the resolution was passed. And he started saying that the Baganda tried to get this central government from the Buganda soil. That's not true, it's a lie. And when I was at Mengo, I appealed to my colleagues that let us investigate and research all these things. And you'll find that 99% of the criticism of the kingdom are fabrications. Hmm. But if we don't uh, prove them wrong and just swim along, we are going to be the sufferers. So I repeat, in 1967, there was no resolution passed by the Luchico required, demanding that the central government removes itself from the territory of Uganda. Thank you very much, Owich Uh Council Judy, you have, you have some questions as well to answer. Yes, uh, from uh, that lady whose name I've forgotten. Mm, uh, was Sumaya. Sumaya mm. was basically commenting. Mm. She just uh, noted, uh, according to her uh, own view, that the uh, Rumbuya saga is a diversion. Mm. And I think she's entitled to her own opinion. Mm. I, I wouldn't want to go into that. However, she also uh, she's worried that uh, the Uganda caucus has not played its role, that uh, they are quiet and she doesn't expect anything from them. Mm. I know the leaders of the Uganda caucus, uh, most of them are my friends. I'm sure they are well-intentioned. They will do work after they have come together as a team. Remember, they mm. comprise of uh, uh, members from different political parties. So they need to first sit down, agree on an agenda, and start moving it. It's too early. We are just sworn in recently. They haven't settled a bit. So let's give them time to settle. I'm sure they will be able to help the Uganda Kingdom. I have a lot of trust in Mwanga Chivumbi. I have worked with him for the last 15 years very closely. He's a very well-intentioned person, very intelligent, and I'm sure he'll be able to guide uh, Buganda Kingdom on what goes on in the parliament. Yes, uh, let's have some other some other voice. I think this should be the last verge, last last section of of the voices, and then we we'll close up. Thank you very much, Dr. Yuko, for the show. I would like to ask Council Peter Nira about the fact that there has been compensation for absentee landlords in some parts of Uganda. I think it was in Uganda and uh, the other sub county that I don't know about. Sorry, I've forgotten its name. But I want him to be honest and tell us when it comes to this compensation and the Uganda Land Fund. Is he conscious that there is a lot of tribalism that has been exposed in that only a section of people are the ones that are compensated when it comes to these factors? And they are serious. How have they expressed these grievances through the Uganda Equity Commission? Thank you. We seem to have a caller. Let's have the caller. Yes, caller, go ahead. Okay, we seem to have lost the caller. Uh, let's go ahead with the voices. I think, uh, which you have had the question? Yes. Mm. Let's have another, another voice or two voices and then we... Hello, good afternoon, Dr. Juko. This is Jaja. I want to yes. so talk about something that is mine. It's not for UNN or anybody else. I have a belief that Ms. Seven cannot do anything more 
to hurt Vaganda than what he has already done. He has killed them, he has stolen their land, and last week, last week you saw what he did with to the Kabaka. After the Kabaka sternly persisting and telling him seven that he's not interested in changing or my land, he talked about massacre segregation and even asked him seven, what is it that we did when the Uganda, the one that brought you into power? That alone affected Museveni's ego as we know him. And he's doing each and every to deny Ugandans and any liberation of their country. He was in shock and he still is because last week he had about UFFC, I mean UFCC, the federal kind of governors, and then the Kabaka came out and told him the same thing. That's why he demeaned the Kabaka, surrounded him with our copy in a compound, seated him on a small chair on the side like he was trash. <laughs> and Museven is doing all this political masturbation using Uganda. He's using Uganda nope to kill Uganda. He's using the likes of Ukanji to destroy Uganda. So for me, the only solution is UFCC. And I call upon each and everybody who wishes Uganda well to just forget about Museven and his Wenge and concentrate on liberating our country. I know 100% this Lumbuyas thing, Saga or Quagmire is just a distraction. I'm even afraid that maybe there is something behind that this government is trying to do or take our Kabaka away or kill him or do something. I don't call it a coincidence a day after the Kabaka's speech to be hijacked by Lumbuye. The same day Bob Wine comes back from America. Dr. Duke, I want you to see on the internet how many Ugandans that are wearing seven transparent face. Even if today he said, okay, Bob come to State House. He's going to go with each and everybody and his son and bring this country down. So UFCC is the only way, is the only place. And if you wish Uganda well, forget about the rest, come and join the best on UNN. Thank you very much. I think... Uh... I think we cannot go beyond that. Let's have several Zambuza, Madambuza, Mami Molida, Mika Molida, sorry, Nemami Babai. Pitchman Muliba lawyers, Ata Muliba to Bakuru, to Vasomako Movitabo, Moma Ulide, Muli Muganda. Buganda to Finavis will be in Jimio. Atenga mweba ntu abali norejebo. Na ye kusonga zona eziru miaba ntu emitima. Ngezi taka, ngeza kabaka wafe. Ukube ranga afana na buatio. Ngabio nevi teka tekevi ita kubuganda. Mukoze wochi mwenga mwe. Okulaba nti mutu yamba ne muyimirira wo naba ntu abalala. Kubanga bufebuli wetula bapano egende waka waka. Bawe raba ntunga fese zizezimu. Katetumba nyi oba muli mabega wabwe. Nga muba tuma. Jimogere yobino. Oba bivogera bie mwagala viva tatusa. Na ye. Tuvade tusaba. Mutu yambe kone kuchogula mbwa waka. 
Nacho wachili agende kebwe lwa kebelewe ko. Hainzo kuba nga takiriziwa. Oba kiriziwa. Na propaganda hainzo kuba o. Na ye raba gamba. E wali omoka. Te wabula muliro. Kusaba mutu yambi. Amanyaga mwe. Gali wandu kukurua. Mungsobi ezikole doa mbuganda. Tue ya nziza. I think our producer, uh, let's not go beyond that. They're going to answer some of these questions. Uh, let's have uh, Council Judy. Can you have your, they have a lot of questions, I think, for you as well. <laughs> yeah, no, no, for me, I have only one. The rest of us. Yeah. <laughs> yes, there is uh, this last one. Uh, uh, one about Kabaka, and then you Japan. can even answer him in Uganda. Okay, mm. um, the one who spoke in Uganda, right? The last one. That. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said Jaja. Ah, Jaja was the other one. Jaja, he had a very good platform. Yes, he okay. was talking about even the diversion. Yes. Yeah. Na yeka tuno Jaja yangu tumba. I mean, yona yangu tumba bila sendi yo. Mwe wazo kujia yensonga zea ya ye murugu njiza Nti kawaka wa mula wa gende wa present mseven Atu wala fisi zezi mu Taki usakomba atu wa genda na ye Na ye kuruna yata deko mutaka Simanyo wa andi mistake ni yata deko mutaka Kulijota mm. vila kwa mutaka Ndwa zoro kwa andi yensonga ya wade ya Ya taka E no mutaka kwa yata deko Na ye ya yugete kwa wade wa kawaka Na abu za ntifetu imiri deo wa wakite tuvaa yunze ni mkuru mwuri hila. Ni utubali wa mbu antu wa wafu deo ni kuogira. Nyabu tuogira na yoru si tu inzo kutavaa yoku ogira um, public. Na wangi nisonga zo waka waka urumute zeta waka ogira public. Na ye kuchine yoku wade waka waka kwa wabu antu wanji wache ogedeko. Nzendo uza katikyo ya vayo na ayogira. Chaino kuogira. Ya wa guidance. Tia kabaka aina abantu babira nabo na abasawu abasoro kumuwa magezi. Nuri chuna tusaba fena tuleke abasaba na abantu abamula vila na ye katikilo. Ensongezo wazi kwa ate kupe. Mepu zile eta mpubliko ye ensonga zogu wade teziba za publiko. Yati na dali ensonga ezo mtu wa mkuru mgoyo. Uh, mpuzi uh, akasemba yu. Uh, Jaja yu gede nti uh, uh, Ya wadilu za wakila kubobu waini mm. Naga bubu waini jeta mwina That one I think you can express it in English Because mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, Samu samu lady called Jaja She mm. talked about uh, bubu waini chagulani And she clearly states that uh, Bubu waini Doesn't have the capacity To take over leadership in Uganda And on top of that Uh Wherever he goes with the President Museveni, he takes members of his family. If they have anything to discuss, he takes members of his family. Uh, I am not very competent to talk about Bob White, but I think he, to some extent he did a good job. He mobilized uh, uh, Buganda, and uh, there is a change. You know the voting partner changed. As he, mm. he, When you look at the results, you can see that we... More people who are propaganda issues, uh, we have voted in, and many of them have started talking mm. to ensure I think that it's a milestone. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So I think we should appreciate him. He's a young man, he's a newcomer on the political scene, but at least he was able to make a serious breakthrough. So we should encourage him. In the case he makes mistakes, we can always uh, sit with him and talk to him and guide him or advise him. Thank you very mm. much, sir. And even more possibly other people can take from there because it's uh, it's not a one man show. Exactly. Thank you very much, yeah, exactly. Thank you very much Council Judy. Uh, Council Owechitiwa, I wonder whether we have him to answer some of the questions that were raised. Oh, yes. It seems that we have lost uh, Owechitiwa. And uh, uh, yes, uh, Council Judy Mbabali, I think as we wind up, try to can you wrap up within three minutes and then in the fourth minute you say bye bye to our viewers. Okay. Uh, one, I thank you for uh, inviting me. 
to be part of uh, this serious discussion. I have also learned a lot of things, first of all from my senior, Council Murira, and from the people I've called in. I have uh, learned uh, what people think about our country. I have now known what uh, the problem exactly is, as far as public, pa pa public perception is concerned. Mm. Um, my guidance is, let's wait, because what we to Kuba Mchisaka, President Ainzo Kuanga Kuba Mchisaka Korea Chivayo. Mm. So let's wait and see if he takes any serious step towards having uh, abolishing uh, my role and system. Eh, politicians are like that, especially President Seven is very cunning. Sometimes he may be diverting us from something important. You know, we have COVID and we have a lot of money which has been received, and there are many complaints from the public about that money. So you may try to divert the attention of Uganda by saying, why don't we talk about this Milo land so that people don't mm. follow this money? So we eat it, finish it. By the time they wake up, we shall have finished the money. So we should be very careful. Let's mm. uh, also keep a keen eye on other developments that are going on in Uganda. Let's not concentrate on only one aspect that probably where we have no evidence that actually the, go the government has uh, uh, started implementing the proposal. Everybody is just talking, Murira is just writing. And I'm happy, <laughs> I'm happy my senior referred to what the uh, Honorable Minister Mayanja is writing as rubbish. That is a serious mm. statement from a senior council. He has also <laughs> said, <laughs> he has also said that uh, he knows that uh, Mayanja doesn't mm. write those articles, but somebody else writes. He's him, ghostly he just, writing. He, mm. Yeah. <laughs> for him, he just happens the signature. Those are interesting revelations from such a senior person. I mm. thank him for having participated. Thank you very much, viewers, for, uh, for, 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 for viewing this program. We pray that whatever we have discussed, if you find it important, please pass it on so that our people uh, get new knowledge. Yeah. Th thank you very much, Council Judy Babali, and thank you very much for being part of this discussion. And we just uh, request you that any other time that we ask for you to come back, you'll be in position too, because uh, I think a lot of things have been learned from our viewership over what you have discussed and with your wise ideas. And we hope not to go beyond this. Just viewers will thank you as well for the effort uh, that you have uh, put in in order to be able to listen to this. Uh, Council, uh, which Tiwa, would you please um, answer those questions? And then from there, we shall be uh, waving bye to our viewers. Uh, it, no, the, the first question was about tribalism in the dispensation of the disposal of the money to absent landlords. Mm. That one I have no personal views about. But I remember at one time there is a gentleman who appeared before the land commission two years ago and he was accused of uh, receiving four billion shillings from that fund. And he was asked why he received it. He said, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> four billion shillings he received and he says, I don't know why I received it. So maybe you have a point there, but I don't want to get into that debate. Mm. The second one was, Mukose uh, Wochi, what have you done? about mm. Buganda's matter. I think you can answer that person in, in, in vernacular so that you'll be able to feel it. Mm. Mm. Right now, offer take a more book form so that more people can uh, access them. Okay. Uh, those are 
tute tuleme kwela likira nyonti buli muntu ali no kuwanda kanze katikiro mulina munyo obwesige ku nsonga za buganda nti azikute bulungi era njagala tumwesige mpulira amalobozi manja akave bwerwe yo ngagogera kinona kiri nesi buli muntu ali no obusobozi bwo kugwanira ebintu bya buganda atene ekirala Jagara kusaba bana papa wa Uganda. Nti tuwe fuge mowa, kwa mbo ligame ni mwe vifutuke wa mwe yo. Bitu teka mitawana. I think it is the, which is why it is the pain people have, you know. <laughs> do, but they have to think about our safety as well. Bo yo kere vi ntuwe vi mwe visasamaza. Mm. Baja kanti Judy Mbabali ya bade kuprogramu mm. ya gami ya niti Uganda ya ya ule ku Uganda. That's true. That's Ula wa chenyo kena kutustikini yes, kwa that's, ideas that's ezili, mm. ezili constructive. Chense mbia yu kukuradu wumu tana Judy ajizembulu unji nyeti buzeju. Na inja gali yu kubabu ulida. Nze minabi ya manyi. Naye abantu bebwe lumugena ne mu fula abeno banti bajiga nyo kubanze manyide there what is going on omuntu obuka bubusi no genda olaba specialist mu America obajja manyo babungereza we no kusoko so kuna primary treatment kuba na basing ya their expertise era manyinte ebigenda maso bijja kuziza olambo asaba sajja mu nteko era nga jodi bwagambye ebirarambire kedde katikiro hmm. then there was a question of uh, i think you did you were not around when we di- discussed the issues to do with the extradition extradition of 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 people from other countries but i think uh, the other one was about it, but we would not go into that because we were not around by it. the time we discussed it. I yes, that extradition of Rome. Yes, so they were saying that it is a diversion. That the gov- Yes. For me, I don't want to call it a diversion. I don't, I don't want to speculate. Let us be specific. I know that this problem of land, land problem started with Amin. It is Amin who banned Milo land first. Mm. And this government returned it. So really, to say that it is a diversion to talk about Rumbuy, I think, is a bit far-fetched. Yes, sir. Uh, would you please say goodbye to our view, wrap up and say goodbye to our viewers <clears throat> as we try to finish it? I want to thank you, our viewers, for the views you have expressed through your questions. And I want to apologize that due to the technical problems at our end, I've not been with you full time. But uh, next time, I promise you, we have learned our lessons. And thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much, uh, our viewers. Thank you very much, uh, Peter Murida. We've been so honored to have you on this platform. Thank you, Council Judy Mbabal. It has been a pleasure. This is a platform, or this is a this is a show, the tower at UNN when we discuss issues that trend in Uganda, and we have a lot of viewership from within the diaspora as well as within Uganda. So many of these people have been expressing their views and their, uh, you know, uh, possibly what the anxiety they have when it comes to their motherland. And I I request that you bear with all those emotions that are shared within the discussion. And possibly we will not go beyond this. We just wish that uh, OHTWA you come back one another time, as I told council, that uh, we are about to, you know, as we try to you know, have a lot of other issues that we bring together for discussion. And especially when it comes to the issue of governance, I think we'll bring you over uh, another weekend as you will be able to give us the time. 
Uh, the rest, members, we, we thank very much. Our producer has been very pertinent when it came to some of the technicalities, and uh, I hope all the technicalities have been solved regardless of the shortcomings. And uh, also thank very much our viewers because they always buy data to, uh, to have their participation. And as usual, the discussion continues. Uh, we are not going away. Uh, from the platform, please. The discussion continues as we also go to the next discussion or the next show of the UNN TV. Uh, we thank you very much, viewers, and don't forget that uh, we are, have uh, a lot of viewership, and we are looking forward to many other many of our viewers to advertise with our TV. We have very many slots as the advert advertisement uh, schedule will be given out. So uh, this tower at UNN has uh, some few slots that will be available for uh, advertising, and then uh, we will be telling you to write to our uh, to our own or the uh, administrators of advertising to be able to put you into one of those slots. Uh, we can't go beyond that. We thank you very much. Uh, we hope everything goes best. And then uh, we have the next show coming on with the principal. Don't go away. Thank you very much for God and my country. And we always thank you. Uh, till next Sunday, don't go away. Thank you. Bye.